so Tracy and I have had this conversation before. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, let me, let me put my contact comments in some sort of context. I'm on a panel, David Eicher, Shane Lee. Um, you do a Google, Google search on the phrase <coughs> black male feminist. And inevitably, one of our names is going to come up like immediately within that search, right? So we've got a certain kind of politics. And the thing that was so freeing and liberating for me in reading Tracy's book, um, where she uses this phrase over and over again, sex positive feminism. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the things that, that I had tried to work through as a male feminist um, who likes women, uh, married for 20 years, but likes women. <coughs> um, it is, is there a way to be a male feminist and also still appreciate mm -hmm. and still be able to be comfortable with heterosexual desire? Uh, and this is part of the stuff that I think Tracy deals with very well in the book, right? Because I think there is a strain of feminist thought um, and even black feminist thought that treats sexuality and sex as a dirty word, right? As if we should be guilty of, of sexual desire within the context of dealing with what a sexism is supposed to do. And you know, a lot of this comes out in Shane's work, I'm sure he'll talk about it you know, when he gets the chance, but, but how do we think about women who are engaged in, in hip hop culture in this way, or work in the strip clubs, and, and not simply read them as being exploited in a larger system that we all recognize and understand, but not everybody works in those systems for the same reasons, right? Some folks are literally working within this context because it creates a space for them to be desired in ways that they normally don't get desired as black women. And theoretically, we don't have a lot of language to help us to talk about these things. N many of you have seen the Nicki Minaj SNL skit from a few weeks ago, um, and it, which made everybody uncomfortable, right? Because you know the, the skit made a big deal about Nicki Minaj's ass. Um, Nicki Minaj makes a big deal about Nicki Minaj's ass. And, and for me, reading that, it was impossible to look at these images and look at this skit and, of course, not think about the hot and tot Venus. And, and I have a, a, an old grad student. She's now a professor at University of Missouri at Columbia. Um, and we're in a class when we're reading another colleague, Janelle Hobson, um, who had wrote a book that dealt with <laughs> the hot and tot Venus. And we got into this whole conversation about the way that we have policed the hot and tot Venus's body. We don't know what she looked like. What we have are these illustrations, these projections of what her body might have looked like. And, and, and Professor Lindsay said in passing as a grad student, well, what if her ass was just that big? Right? What if this is not some sort of racist projection onto a black woman's body? What if that was her physicality? Right? And, and then what kind of theoretical language did we find to deal with that reality of this sexualized black woman's body? Right? And, and as, a way to, as a way for us to begin to again think about the way that, you know, it, the best way for me to describe it is that you know, when we think about black women's bodies, we have what I like to call the, the sliding stripper pole. Mm -hmm. um, we have black women who are placed on a pedestal, all right, Queen Mama Zulu, all right, and then at the bottom they're just shiftless sex workers, et cetera, et cetera, and it's a slippery slide from the top of Mama Zulu down the stripper pole, to, you know, to this other particular space, and it has everything to do about how both positions ultimately police our ideas about what black women's sexuality and physicality should be, and the thing that I loved about Tracy's book is that you know while she was very critical of the broader industry that exploits these women and these women and these men. Uh, we need to be clear that there's multiple exploitation taking place. She also recognized that it's a space that we need to, to create more healthy language to talk about black sexuality within the context of this culture. And again, how do we find a way to introduce our children to think more healthily about their bodies and the images that they confront all the time within the context of a culture that positions black and female sexuality is something as strange, as oppositional, as dirty, as funky. Uh, and we know all the language and all the terms that we've talked about these things. <laughs>